This is Saturday, March 24th. And I'm out riding on my Triumph and Tom is behind me on the Kawasaki. We just went this morning for a group riding instructional session at Willow Creek Church. The group, the High Road Riders, put on different educational seminars and safety seminars and pretty much anything you could dream of to get more educated with motorcycles. And since almost all the time it's free, I like to take advantage of it. Free is good. And they give you the book with the materials and everything. They have some guys with a lot of training and uh, writing experience giving the seminars, including paramedics, EMTs, former police officers. So they get you up to speed on the different group writing skills and how they've improved their group writing over the years. Last time I went riding with them, I think every group of riders, we split up into groups because they don't want to have one road captain handling so many people. But I believe every group had an, uh, I think it's called an emergency responder or something like that. Anyway, a person trained in a, enough medical techniques to uh, keep the person as safe as possible until the ambulance arrives. Plus two paramedics actually belong to the group of high road riders too, so they're on call if need be, and they need to get to the scene before the ambulance does. They uh, went over instructions for if people get split up from the group, what to do, uh, how to do the proper stagger. And one important thing that they brought up too, that uh, not a, a huge amount of it, because I've been riding in groups for a while, not a huge amount of it was a total surprise to me, but one thing that I think does need to be concentrated more in group ridings is uh, to let the members know in the group ride that you do what the group leader does, the road captain, you don't try to help out the sweeper. That can be a problem and it gives them a, a safety problem because if you have two lanes narrowing down into one, obviously the sweeper first is going to go over and uh, block the one lane that's closing down so people won't try to speed up and break into the group. But if you try to help the guy that's the sweeper, what can happen is he could be moving over as the last car overtakes him. And so then there will be a car in the middle of the group. And then you're trying to help him by moving over in the middle of the group and you've blocked the car front and back because you got to realize the road captain is communicating with the sweeper. And so if he's moved over and there's a car that got in ahead of him, he's going to tell the captain to slow down and let the guy get totally in front of the group so he doesn't split in. Whereas if you try to be of help, that's not necessarily a good thing. You could actually make the situation worse. And I've noticed that in group rides too. A lot of people do want to try and be helpful, but it doesn't end up being so helpful. So always follow the lead of the road captain. Oh man, my visor is fogging up here. Still quite cool. It's in the 40s. But I see some other motorcycles out besides just me. But I think it was a very worthwhile course. It ran from 9.30 to 11.30, so it was two hours and then a 10 minute break in between, so it wasn't really so long it got tiring. But anyway, the main subject I want to talk about is uh, kind of a little bit of a light subject. These are the, um, I follow posts on Facebook from, if anybody knows me, I'm a super, super cat lover. Along with dogs too. I mean, I have dogs and cats. I I like both equally, but I could easily, just because I like cats so much, I could easily accumulate too many. And one of the main reasons why I've stopped at four cats is uh, 
I think if you own too many animals that you don't get to know their personalities and get to know them personally and spend time with them, you're kind of just uh, collecting objects then. You're not really um, accomplishing anything as far as the welfare of the animal or even for yourself because I find it hard to believe that people that own 12 or more cats, um, even if they can tell you they know each of their personalities individually, that may be possible, but how much of an individual relationship or time could you spend with that one individual cat if you have that many? And I think with four cats, that pretty much stretches me to the limit. And I don't really think if I got more cats, even if I could, I mean, there's no, in our town, there isn't any limit to how many cats you can have, just however many you, as long as you can take care of them properly, that's the only law about that. Dogs, we do have a limit, but not a specific set limit for cats. But the bottom line is I wanted to ask a question. When does it reach the point to where you, by most people's opinion, become the crazy cat person? And I think it right, <clears throat> from what people have told me, I think it is right in that neighborhood of between three and four. Two cats, I don't think anybody would ever call you a crazy cat person for two cats. Three, possibly, but yeah, once you reach four, I think then you become the crazy cat person. But I don't mind that so much. I like my four cats, I'm keeping my four cats. In fact, originally there were uh, seven cats when the one cat had kittens and we gave two of them a home, so. Or no, uh, let me get this right. There were one, two, five, six. There were six we gave two a home, that's four. I can't even add and subtract, right? And I told the people that I gave the cats to, if there was ever a problem, you do not give that cat up to a shelter, you bring it back, so. Not likely, because I think that we gave them, we chose two good homes, but just in case, there is always a possibility in the next five, six, seven years that we could see one of our cats come back to us, which is fine. But I would rather stay with four if possible. So my question to you is, what is the number you reach when you become the crazy cat person?